Good evening and welcome to Point Blank here at KG News. And we are shooting from uh, the Nairobi Serena. Uh, since uh, the retired President Daniel Arap Moy repealed Section 2A of the Constitution, uh, this country has had two momentous elections. One, the Abogabu election of Moy Kibaki and the never-ending um, competition of the Jubilee and NASA parties. Three of the four presidents since independence have in one way or another overseen changes to the constitution of Kenya that have for better or worse changed the course of the nation's social political history. It only remains for me to present you. Founding President Jomo Kenyatta directed 14 amendments to the constitution during his reign. Among them were the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 28 of 1964 that established the office of the Vice President, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 17 of 1966 that required an MP who resigned from the political party that sponsored him during the election to vacate his seat. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 40 of 1966 that abolished the Senate and merged the two houses thus establishing a unicameral legislature and the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 2 of 1974 that lowered the voting age of 21 years to 18 years. <laughs> Kenya's second president, Daniel Toroiti Charap Moy's 15 amendments included the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 5 of 1979 that required the public officers who wished to contest parliamentary elections to have resigned at least six months before their elections. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act of 1982 that introduced Section 2A to the Constitution, converting Kenya into a one-party state. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 14 of 1986 that removed the security tenure of the offices of the Attorney General Controller and Auditor General. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 2 of 1990 that restored the security of tenure of the Office of the Public Service Commission, High Court Judges, and Court of Appeal Judges. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 12 of 1991 that repealed Section 2A of the Constitution, which had converted Kenya to a one party state in 1982 and the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act No. 10 of 1997 that reinforced the repeal of Section 2A of the Constitution by introducing Section 1A. The effect of this was to change Kenya from a one-party state to a multi-party state. Mimi Mwaikibaki. Mwai Kibaki, the third president, directed one amendment necessitated by the disputed elections of December 2007 and the violence that continued into 2008 following his swearing-in. This was the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Act 2008 that created a coalition government through the establishment of an office of the prime minister and two deputy prime ministers. Will the BBA report presented to President Uhuru Kenyatta on 26th November 2019 at State House Nairobi and a day later to Kenya at BOMAS be Uhuru's chance to improve the constitution of Kenya? Twende to some to jadiliane kati yetu mwezi huu ambapo tunaelekea siku kuu. Tutafute nafasi labda mwanzo wa mwaka uje mpya. Tuje tukae tuone hiyo maoni. Good evening you're watching Point Blank. Is something now happening to Kenya? Is the BBI launch at the bombers of Kenya more than meets the eye? The presentation of the long-awaited Building Bridges Initiative report that was presented to President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House Nairobi and then to the nation at the bombers a day later should have quelled Uhuru's anger. Instead, days after the BBI report release, Uhuru speaking at the Mango Catholic Church in Gatundu North constituency lashed out at leaders, particularly those from Mount Kenya Backyard, accusing them of creating confusion and division for their own selfish interests and forgetting who they owe allegiance to for putting them in those political offices. <laughs> Normal 
at your Muguka, in your name, Muria Muguka, and in a Jewi, at your Kenya, Mareda Zayu, at your Kenya, Mareda Orumwe, at your Turaki, the Hadi to Kayati, Sagan and Sagan and the Tuanoga. Can I hear it? Martina in a cube, Berea to the Voti, Nebu, Ma Toya Maduroka, Muguima, Magetu, Kagera Mauro Magi, Leonio Ima, Leonio Nigan Valley. Even before he became president, Uhuru has consistently hammered in the message of unity and purpose. At a rally in Moranga on 28th March 2011, the then Deputy Prime Minister asked the leaders to respect President Mwai Kibaki and remember that even he will not be in his position without the head of state's backing. <laughs> Kenya uru wa Kenya ta ona re de la mea hamaduri wo mwaka wa 2007 wo tire oge aduri wo age koro da nyite de ke makinta ne maka ne maheni ne ne kwara to iwidani aha atongori a me aha ate ore otara shoka konyita na na re age ore ote ko ta koromera mutaratara wa ku vatura na gotatara ndo itu amenye mudenyo sio sia ta sia ke ne sia ni aboroni wa ke good evening Political formations are quickly unraveling. Raila Odinga talks about a super alliance. William Ruto talks about entering state house at 2022. In the center of all this, Kirinyaga governor is not far from the public eye. What is Anna Waigoro up to? Anne Waigoro was one of the first Mount Kenya leaders to fully embrace the historic handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. In her own words, Raila and her, quote-unquote, first settled the history we had together and, quote-unquote, announced the launch of a new friendship in the interest of national development. On 31st August 2019, Waigoro, together with women leadership from across the party divide, dubbed Team Embrace, were welcomed to the historic Tononoka grounds by Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Yoho. There, they brought to the people the message of peace and hope and support for the Building Bridges initiative. The spirit of the BBI was self-evident during the recently concluded Kibra constituencies by elections. Speaking during the final campaign rally, Waigoro expressed her deep admiration for Prime Minister Raila Odinga and following the election's results, congratulated the ODM Kibra elect MP Imran Okoth and the people of Kibra for honoring the handshake. Waiguru's position as key cog building bridges was recognized on Bomas on 27th November 2019 when she was one amongst the few called up to speak in support of the recently unveiled BBI report. Most recently, at a fundraising ceremony at Gadurueni Secondary School in Kirinyaga County, hosted by Interior Principal Secretary Karanja Kibicho, Waiguru led calls for the support of the BBI report, noting that so many benefits to the people of Kenya and that its primary goal was to unite Kenyans. Present during the function was the Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi and Governors Hassan Jo of Mombasa, Kajados Joseph Olelenku, and James Zongwae of Kisi and Tarakanidis Mudoni Njoki. 
Uh, good evening. Before I speak to my guest, Waigoro, what is going on behind the scenes? Anne Mumbi Waigoro contested and won the Kirinyaga gubernatorial seat during the 8th August 2017 general elections. The first time politician coined the phrase Kirinyaga Rising, meaning it to be the first realization of a new dawn for once dormant county and relatively unknown people. From health care. <laughs> Na kuongeza vitanda kwenye wodi kutoka miambili hamsini hadi miatano ili kushugulikia wagonjwa zaidi. To water projects, to the building of modernized markets, Anne Waigoro aims for every project commissioned under her watch to uplift the lives of the people of Kirinyaga as well as serve as model beacons that can be replicated countrywide. Tukiwa katika mkondo wa siyasa, tulizunguka huku Kirinyaga na tukagizia watu wa Kirinyaga tutawafanya kazi. Good evening, Governor. Karibu sana, Tupoi Mblang. Asante sana. Welcome. Thanks for having welcome. me again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Governor, just, let's start at the beginning. Okay. The, the Star newspaper, mm -hmm. I, I don't often read it, <laughs> but I notice that um, uh, William Ruto is leading uh, in Kenyan political polls at 40%. <laughs> Against who? <laughs> <laughs> Against two. There is no contest that has been declared. There is no, no one running for president that we know officially. And so when you say that he's leading and there's no other candidate, I mean, is he running against himself? And, and Tony, I don't even think you people realize in that same newspaper, at the corner, there was another poor that had the same newspaper posted on the same day. And they said um, Matiangi would be voted for by 56, I think, percent of the country. If he ran. So I, I don't know what we're talking about. I, I don't know whether they mis, mis, mistakenly put those two polls or it was supposed to generate a, a conversation. But it's, it's too early. And what's important right now in the place that we are at, Tony, I think this country is in a very significant moment. You know, very significant. And I'm, and I'm wondering whether um, these people who have been trying to throw those polls around, it's because of a panic. Um, this country will not be the same post BBI. It will not be. Because um, the, the changes that we are anticipating that are going to be brought about by the BBI will definitely change our political landscape, will change the democracy of this country, because we are moving from a place where we felt uncomfortable as a country to a place where we can place, put this country in a more stable, um, more inclusive place. And so you can't start talking about uh, a race that will be completely different from the races that we have known in the past. You know, in the past, there was only two candidates, um, uh, a, a president and a, a deputy, running against another president and deputy. It's not going to happen like that again. Uh, going into the future, we're going to change and see a more inclusive um, unity and, and teams that are more national. And so when we get there is when you start saying who really so, is so, ahead. So, so not to diminish uh, yeah. you and my sister, Charity Ngul, yeah. I noticed you spoke on behalf of the women of Kenya. Yeah. You, you, uh, and I've seen you become visible. Mm -hmm. uh, not that you are invisible. But since Kibra, umeanza kuonekana hapa na pale, because there were 47 governors mm -hmm. and only a few spoke at Bomas. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are saying Jeanette Mohammed had instructions from above. <laughs> no, let, me, let me say this, uh, uh, t Tony. You know, I don't know why anyone was complaining. Those people who spoke there have been the advocates of BBI from the very beginning. You cannot go to launch a product with people who are anti that product. I mean, it's just common sense. Uh, you, if you have been advocating for it, you have been on the journey, you have been the one who has been uh, rallying people. We've been speaking about this for a very long time, telling people we need a more cohesive country. We need to look at, at the fabric that uh, defines our political space. And then the day comes and you go and get somebody who you know has been saying they are opposed to it, I mean, it's been public. 
they have been talking about it until that day. What, what would you expect? You, you had a meeting with Prime Minister Raila Odinga last week. Yes. And social media were, went on fire. I mean, they came for you. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you a threat to William Ruto? What, I, I mean, and I, and, and I am asking you point blank, because Twitter was on fire for two days. Yes. And Waigoro with Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Why are you a threat to Ruto? I mean, you, Tony, um, the right honorable meets very many people. And they, you don't see that sort of reaction. And I think, I've said again, um, they must be saying something about me. Why are they so threatened? Why is it such a big deal if I have a meeting with, with Raila? If you have the ground, why are you bothered about my conversation if, if I have no influence? I think they can see the potential um, impact that uh, uh, a different formation can have. And, and, and I think they've panicked. And so they get their bloggers out there. But you know that doesn't change no, but, anything. But because, Guru, because this is point blank, yes. a lot of people have told me, mm -hmm. you are seriously going for the prime minister's position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been told that Odinga is warming up to you. Could it be that these matters are out there? And, and, I, and this is point blank. I wouldn't say that we've discussed specific positions. And, and, um, and I think that would be jumping the gun. I think at this point, we have one common agenda. And this is what I said from the very beginning. One, I support the handshake, Tony, between the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, and Raila Molo Odinga. And the reason I support it is not just because of them. It's because I believe in the spirit of the handshake. It is something that is within me. I believe that it is good for this country. And this is where the difference is usually between women and men. You know, women tend to be a little bit more public spirited because we have to look at this country beyond individuals. You could have had conversations, you could have given uh, promises, but you must put this country first. This is not about two people. This is about Kenya. And so the handshake is setting for us a platform to fundamentally change the way we govern ourselves, the, the way we run our politics, the way this yeah. country will look in the future. Uh, but and I, that is the side that I am on. And, that is, and that's why, um, Tony, you see me a lot with Raila Molo Odinga. It's got nothing to do with uh, personal uh, issues. It's right now, we need to make sure that this BBI succeeds. And, and Tony, but, but Anna, I must interrupt you, Governor. Since your wedding in Morana, then you are the most visible Kirinyaga. Yes. <laughs> and then, well, to Morana yes, in yes, Kirinyaga. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, sorry, you know, yes. um, yes. you know yes. you, no yes. more Kohike Kudu. They were Aikira Morana. In other words, you were married in yes. Morana. Yes. But then, since then, mm -hmm. then Kibra, mm -hmm. you became the most vocal. In fact, the president did not go. And the president has talked about Kibra three, four times. Mm -hmm. He says, I know it's hurting people, mm -hmm. but I know we lost. Yet he sent you and Maina Kamanda. Then I, you go and see Prime Minister. You, you know why I'm asking this? I know you're talking about the bigger picture, but wewe uko katika mchezo hata unafanya, there is no doubt something about you is going on. And I'm saying this because reading the tweeters mm -hmm. that when you went to Odinga's office mm -hmm. and reading that fire, I can see there is beginning uh, to lay of ground. Let me put it to you this way. Mm -hmm. Alfred Mutua, yes. uh, Hassan Joho. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, there's a team that is seeming to be, what, yeah. what is going on? Tony, this, the politics of this country must change. And we must start bringing like-minded leaders together where we talk in one voice and represent the whole of this country. This country is not, if you notice, this noise that has even been there about BBI, there's a lot of that noise is around only central Kenya and, and a little of Rift Valley. The rest of the country is watching us. And the question I even ask people from my backyard, are we going to elect ourselves? You know, you're not being elected as president of Mount Kenya. You're going to be elected president of Kenya. And Kenya is bigger than central Kenya. I mean, that's why you see us, you saw us on that day. We had Ongwai um, on the podium. We had Ngilu. We had uh, Mutua. We had other governors coming from other areas. And if you listen to the conversation around... Oparanya was there, yes, I think. Yeah. I mean, he'd been there before, yeah. when mm. Joho had been there before. Uh, we are saying something about the importance of bringing this country together. It is important that we first put aside our personal ambitions and put this country first, where we bring leaders from across section of regions so that they also feel represented. This conversation of drumming up support of only two regions, like they're the only two regions that determine the governance of this country. I think that has to change. The, the president uh, spoke candidly at Bomas, and so did the prime minister, about how hard it was for them to even meet and start to talk. 
is, is there, I feel as though there's too much boardroom politics that somehow mm -hmm. you, you're almost apologetic. It, it's as though mutaki siyasa, kisiyasa inajulikana, kuna njia ya siyasa. Sasa si mutoke boardroom. You know, you know, Tony, um, I have said the same thing and you saw us in Kibra and you've had this conversation about BBI. We actually want this conversation to move out of Nairobi. We need to get out of Nairobi. We need these boardroom conversations and uh, analysis that we're doing to get out of, of the city. Let us go to, to Mombasa. Let us go to Bungoma. Let us go to Kisumu. Let's go to Turkana. Let's hear what are the people of Isiolo saying about this document. This is not a preserve of the elite. This is about the people of Kenya. And the people of Governor, Kenya... Governor, that is interesting. Are given. you talking about national rallies? Or what are you saying? I'm well, saying whatever form it takes, the president must start getting out there. The president must go with uh, Raila Molodinga and tell people, what is this BBI about? Let's not be intimidated by several press conferences that are organized by a group of, of politicians. This country is bigger than them. And let the people decide. Tony, you know they had said they will oppose it. They even call press conferences, isn't it? Yes. Why did they? <laughs> Why didn't they oppose it? Yeah. Because they know they will face the wrath of the Mwananchi. This document serves Kenyans, not a few individuals, serves Kenyans. And it's about time the president and Raila, because of the handshake, starts hitting the ground and going all over the country. Let us hear them in Masinde Moliro. Let us hear them in Tononoka. Let's hear them out there and let them sell this document and the future of this country. Because if we leave it to a few elite, I think they will... Um, cannibalize it, and then uh, we will be back to square one where we are. And it's not too long before the election starts. So, so are, are, um, are you now saying that it's time to take it to the Tanga Tanga group? Uh, you, you, you know, Governor, we, we can't talk uh, in corners. Are you saying enough has been said? Now, now we, we, you know, politics is pol real politics. Let me tell you something. This document will set the foundation for politics. It is not a political document. It just happens that the politicians were attempting to capture it so that uh, they can carry out their own agenda, which was mostly to kill it. There are people who are opposed to certain proposals, and especially this proposal of the Prime Minister is making people a bit uh, shaken. I, I, I don't understand why. Because um, even if you're going to lead in this country, I don't think anyone should lead by themselves. I think that is a mistake that we made. There must be checks and balances. There must be a team that is held accountable both by the parliamentary system and also amongst themselves. You have people who can check you and tell you, I think you're making a mistake here. I think. Part of the problems that we have found ourselves in here is because we, it has been a very closed system. So it's not so much about Tanga Tanga or Kieleweke or, or any other political formation. This document needs to go to the people. Let us hear what the people's but, view but, but, but are governor, on devolution. But Governor, I must say this. You, you know, I, I know you're very close to Kenyatta. But for Kenyatta to come out twice and just a week ago in his native language, you know, pain, you can see the president is in pain and addressing in very, very terse words that because I'm quiet, they should not think I'm a fool. In fact, uh, well, you know, it must hurt you to see Uhuru hurt. I, I am actually very disappointed by the leaders in, in Mount Kenya. Let me, let me say it here. Because um, if you listen to this narrative that they have gone and coined in boardrooms and come and sold to the Mount Kenya people, they're trying to show that the president doesn't have a following. The reason they think he doesn't have a following is because he's been sitting in uh, Nairobi governing a whole country. If he was to start doing politics, I think the, the ground would really change. Let me explain the, uh, the, one of the things that they have sold, one of the lies that they have sold, that um, people are not happy, which is true. Um, they, we have problems with coffee. We have problems with tea, right? Those are ch we have challenges out there concerning not getting our money if, as Mount, Mount Kenya people uh, where our produce is concerned. But if um, the president is wrong, so is Ruto. Because they're in the same government. You cannot say that this one is good and this one is bad. And it is the same government. You can tell it's a propaganda. And the pain that we see is because it's been very well crafted to fight the president and try and take the ground away why, from why, why, why are you from, saying this? There was, a, there was a function you attended in Kirinyaga, yes, the governor. And it was interesting to see heckling of minor commander and other leaders. I mean, it looked as though Central Kenya is saying to you and Kenyatta and the Kieleweke side that we are, you don't have the ground. You know, 
you know, have you lost the all, ground? First of all, Tony, that was not um, Mount Kenya speaking. There was a group of women who had been hired to heckle um, by, uh, it's a very unfortunate, another woman leader in Kirinyaga County. And, and, this is and Blanc, who? What, I mean, it was uh, the the, the uh, woman rep who had brought people who were supposed to heckle anti-BBI sentiments. Who? So who was the woman? Is let me get... not uh, give her the whatever <laughs> yes. the, the project. So the issue here is is not so much about the ground because it was not a political meeting. That was um, as a foundation. Uh, P.S. Kibicho was launching a foundation. You know, it was not nothing to do with politics of BBI. And if it's um, an issue of politics, Tony, we all got elected. You know that. We all got elected. We all went to the ground and looked for these votes. We were not brought our seats on a platter. It was not a campaign. We had the honor of having very distinguished guests to raise lots of money for Kirinyaga students who cannot afford education. And a very good initiative that was done there by our peers. If it was a matter of politics, it would be a different story because um, different people can rally different troops. <laughs> you know, you saw the other day, if, if it's an issue of heckling, people can be heckled everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, but that is where we need to move away from. That is the politics that we must get away from, Tony. And that is why we're talking about this BBI. This issue of intimidation and, and threats and uh, uh, talking at people and uh, canvassing must end. And, 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 uh, and if they are but, not... But, but I, what I'm asking politically, if the president and his group, because the ministers that were there were more than 10, mm -hmm. I think as governors you may have been more than... Eight, eight about eight. Eight governors. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that there is the audacity to heckle the president's men I mean, it's as though uh, Tanga Tanga have decided to put it to the president, you know, on the face. Which is precisely what I'm saying. It's unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate that such disrespect can be shown to the head of state. It's unfortunate. It does not matter what our feelings are. This is the symbol of unity of this country. And they must be respected. Because this same person who's disrespecting must remember that in the event they sit on that seat, they can have the same happen to them, you know? So we must be very clear about um, what it is that we're selling. And I'll repeat this again. If we are unhappy as Mount Kenya people with Uhuru, we should be unhappy with Ruto because it's the same government. Let me put it out there. You cannot say that you're very happy with Ruto, but you're very unhappy with the president because of coffee, but they're in the same government. So this propaganda must stop. And Mount Kenya people must start listening to what is happening to our ground. Somebody has infiltrated us and decided to divide us. And we have bought it hook, nail, and sinker, and have gone on one side and are actually starting to cannibalize ourselves. We are fighting ourselves. And this must stop. Mount Kenya must be speaking on one voice. Let me say another thing. I think I would caution every leader right now to not get carried away with this wave that they seem to be um, enjoying at this point in time. We're known to always vote as a block, regardless of the noise that is usually there before. The second thing is, Mount Kenya is known to vote out 80% of their leaders, 80. Even when we were re-electing Kibaki, we sent a lot of his troops home. So let, let them be very careful that this doesn't turn against them. We need to put the interests of the people first. If you're sitting in an agricultural committee in parliament, if you're in the budget committee, which resources have you allocated to sort out that coffee problem and that tea problem? You can't call a press conference. And then it's really unfortunate. The minister of agriculture is sitting in a press conference complaining about coffee. And, and who now, if the minister is complaining and he's been hired by the president, you know, to resolve that problem, if he's unable, he should step out and let somebody else come and sit on that job and resolve the problem of Mount Kenya. And tell us, as leaders, you play this role, I play this role. Where we've reached right now, even counties can't do anything. It's national policy that are required. The minister needs to take charge of it. The MPs need to pass the resolution. If it's a debt waiver, why can't they pass it? They're the ones who allocate budgets. Why can't they just say from today we are passing a debt waiver on that coffee so that people can be able to sell their coffee at a better price? Because we know one of our issues is debt. But we keep issuing press conferences and exciting people and cheating them. But wait, this document goes to the ground and people start having conversations. And we tell them, actually, your problem, this is your problem. <laughs> your problem is not the president. The president cannot come and do policy. This 
people who have been appointed. These people you elected to go and represent you in Bunge are not representing you. All they are doing is politicking here and trying to position themselves for some positions which are unknown because we don't even know which positions will exist in 2022. Well, you're watching Point Blank here at KTN News. Kirinyaga Governor Anwa Igoro challenges opinion polls. He says that Ruto cannot run against himself. You're watching KTN News.